So module one, homework two covers everything about solving equations, quadratic equations by factoring. So we're going to start with this problem number one, solve the quadratic equation by factoring. So when solving by factoring, these are the steps you need to follow. And problem one, two, three are going to be some examples of it. You first need to make sure your problem is written in standard form. Standard form means you have your equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So that means everything, all the terms on one side and then zero on the other side. Next, you make sure you factor your expression um, and you know when you're factoring it's that you have several ways to factor that we learned in MAT 1033 but of course we're going to see some of the methods um, in this and we can go briefly over them you can go on YouTube to refresh more your memory about how to factor trinomials of second degrees second degree um and then at the end you're gonna have to use the zero product property which says which says if you have a product of a times b equals zero then a equals zero or b equals zero or both of them zero then in, in this case you will be able to set the first expression equals zero x plus x1 equals zero which gives you x equals x1 and x plus x2 equals zero will give you x um, equals actually it's negative negative x2 and then you can use your graphing calculator to verify your solutions so let's go ahead and practice on what we just looked at in and in some examples and we're gonna look at them in examples one through three so first we, we want to have everything on one side so we have x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0 since coefficient of x squared equals 1 so you can set up your parentheses and find two numbers that you multiply to get 15, negative 15 and then add them to get negative 2 you can play around the factors of negative 15 but the two factors of negative 15 that the sum equals negative 2 are negative 5 and 3 negative 5 times 3 equals negative 15 negative 5 plus 3 equals negative 2 so in your parentheses you complete with x and one of the factors x plus the other factor equals zero then you apply the zero product property when x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals zero it means that x minus 5 equals zero or x plus 3 equals 0 so when you solve you add 5 on both sides uh, and subtract 3 on both sides x equals 5 or x equals negative 3 your solution is 5 or negative 3
That's number one. Number two, we do the same thing. And also remember, you can use calculator, graphing calculator to verify. Or substitute x5 x equals 5 x equals 3 in original equation to verify so in this case problem number two we also have a quadratic equation and we do the same thing we find all the terms on one side 2x squared minus 3x minus 54 equals 0. In this case, send the que since the coefficient of x squared is not 1, in this case it's 2. If it's not 1, then you can't do your direct factoring. I advise everybody to do group factoring. So you multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant to times negative 5, negative 54 in this case, that's negative 1 or 8. The same thing that you would you, you did with the negative 15 in the previous problem, now you're going to do it with the negative 1 or 8. Two factors of negative 1 or 8 that will add up to negative 3. And then after you find them, you're going to separate the negative 3 with these two factors and with the as a coefficient of x. So negative 108, two factors of negative 108 that the sum is negative, negative 3 are, of course, like I said, you're going to make sure you can, you play with the factors to find the, the two factors that the sum is negative 3, but the negative, the the two factors are negative 12 and 9. Negative 12 time, times 9 is negative 108. And negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. So now you can bring it down. The negative 3x becomes negative 12x plus 9x and then you bring the 54 down and then the 2x squared in the front you bring them down the reason you do that is because you cannot perform a group factoring without having four terms expression so when you have a four term expression you go ahead and group them by two terms and find the GCF of each group. This group, the GCF is 2x. And when you factor the 2x out, you left inside with x minus 6. The second group, 9x minus 54. The GCF is 9. Factor 9 out. And then to in the inside, you're going to put x minus 6 equals 0. Now you have a new GCF binomial that is x minus 6. You can factor it out again, x minus 6 factored out. Then you have 2x minus I mean, plus 9 as the two factors you have. Now you apply the zero product property x minus 6 equals 0 or x or 2x plus 9 equals 0 then you find two solutions x equals 6 by adding 6 on both sides by subtracting 9 on both sides and divide divide by 2 you get x equals negative 9 over 2 or also that is negative 4.5.
So your solution is 6 and negative 9 over 2. But of course, you can substitute in, the, in your original equation to verify or use your graphing calculator. In, in, in class, we may go over the steps to solve by using the graphing calculator to solve an equation using the graphing calculator and also how to verify using the graphing calculator. Um, in this case, you have a two-term expression. For a two-term expression, you have multiple ways you can do it, but in every time when you're solving a quadratic equation or you're solving any equation, you must check to see if there is a GCF, a greatest common factor with the terms so you can factor it out. In this case, yes, we do have a GCF that is 2x. Let's factor it out. 2x factor, x plus 6 equals 0. You can still apply the zero product property. The first factor is that, and the second is this one. So that's 2x equals 0, or x plus 6 equals 0. And then you can move on solving each equation to find the solutions. With the first equation, divide by 2, x equals 0, because that cancels 2, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. Or, if you subtract 6 on both sides, x equals negative 6. So you have another, you have the solutions of this equation, 0 and negative 6. Of course, you can verify by plugging these values into your previous equation to verify, or using your graphing calculator. And now number four, number four, you have to solve this equation using the square root property. You have the steps when solving by using the square root property. First, you should isolate your squared expression. So any expression with the square, if it may be a group of terms with parentheses raised to to the second power or it may be one term raised to the second power but what you do first is to you isolate the group of terms raised to the second power that's step one now step number two is that you use the square root property you use the square root property the square root property what it says it says that if you have if you have the square root of a equals b it means that a if it, it, it means that if you have the square root of the square root property says if you have a squared equals b it means that a equals the plus or minus, always plus or minus, the square root of B. So if you have, if you have A squared equals B, you, it, it can be transformed into plus or minus the square root of B. And that's why step one is important for you because you want to have your square root term by itself your square term by itself just like you have you have this by itself so that you can apply the square root property by solving the square part by taking by applying the the rule number 2 the step number 2 which is applying the square root property that is find finding the the expression that was squared by taking the square root of the other side and always remember to keep the sign plus or minus now the next step and in the same step never forget that if you have a negative if you have a negative number if b is a negative number you need to transform the negative sign into square root of a, a negative one i equals square root of negative one 
and apply the simplification necessary so you can have your final expression and then don't remember, don't forget about solving or uh, verifying by plugging the solution into your final expression your, your original equation or using your graphing calculator but in case it's a negative number that you're taking the square root you're not going to be able to plug in it's just going to stay as a radical expression or a complex expression i meant now let's up let's try this into some examples number four Number four, it says solve by using the square by using the square root property. Now, when you're using the square root property, remember we said that you need to isolate the square. That's the square you need to isolate. So you're going to have to subtract eight on both sides. So three x squared equals uh, negative negative eight plus twenty six. So that's going to be negative 8 plus 26 is going to be 18. Negative 8 plus 26 is 18. So that's 18. And then you divide by 3. x squared equals... 6 and then now you're going to apply the square root property x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 6 and then your solution is negative square root of 6 and positive square root of 6 and keep in mind if you just say square root of 6 you you miss the answer the, the solution of this equation is not just negative 6. It's both negative square root of 6 and positive square root of 6. So you can apply the same thing here. But since it's negative, we can do it. Let's add 2 on both sides. So that's 3x squared equals negative, 40, negative 147. Divide by 3. We have x squared equals negative 147 divided by 3 equals negative 49. And then apply the square root property x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 49. In the set of real numbers, we cannot solve square root of negative 49. But since we know that, we know that square root of negative 1 i equals square root of negative 1 i equals square root of negative 1 so we can say that this equals x equals plus or minus square root of negative 1 times square root of 49 so square root of negative 1 is i we we going to have x equals plus or minus i square root of 49 and now you see how we have a, a regular number to solve by square root so we're gonna have x equals 7 plus or minus 7i so we have two solutions complex solutions uh, um, 7i and negative 7i. So we have these two solutions, complex solutions for this quadratic equation. Now we can go with number number 8. Uh, after number 4, we got to go number Number five, right? Oops. We didn't do number five. Oh, that was number five. 
Now let's do number six. Number six is the same thing. Number six is the same thing. We only have to, we only have to isolate the square. So we should divide by two. Then we get x plus one squared equals 20. So now since the x, the squared per part is isolated, we can apply the square root property, which is this one without the square, this expression that was squared, just drop the square and equal on the other side plus or minus the square root of 20. Now 20 is not a perfect square, like nine is like, um, 144 is like two, um, 121 is or 9 or 25 are or 4 but it's not the only thing you need to check when you have a number to solve the square root you also can check whether this number under the square root can be simplified as the product of a perfect square and a number that is not a perfect square in this case 20 can be seen as uh, square root of 4 times 5 which 4 is a perfect square which transforms your expression as plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 and square root of 5 stays square root of 5 and now you can subtract the 1 on both sides of the equation and you subtract 1 on both sides of the equation and then you're left with x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root of square root of 5, not 4, square root of 5. And two solutions, negative 1 plus square root, 2 square root of 5, negative 1 minus 2 square root of 5 are your two solutions of your quadratic equation. And number seven, they want me to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is that where A, B, C are the coefficients in your equation. So that said, A equals one, B equals seven, and C equals two, which go ahead and plug in. So x equals b, negative b in the formula, negative b, so that's negative 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 7 squared is 49 minus 4, a is 1, and c is 2 over 2 times a, that's 2 times 1. Simplify the square root. The, the expression under the square root first. Keep these ones just like they are. And the square root of 49 is for the square root of 49 minus 4 times 4 times 8. 4 times 2 is 8. So that's uh, 41. Now, when you look at 41, it does not have a it's not a perfect square and it does not have a factor that is a perfect square so it's going to remain the same over 2 so you have the two solutions negative 7 plus square root of 41 over 2 and negative 7 minus square root of 41 over 2 are the two solutions of your quadratic equation so Remember, we solved the first problem, the first three problems by factoring. We also solve by uh, using the square root property. Now, these problems we are solving using the, the quadratic formula. So still, number eight, they want me to solve by using qu quadratic formula. So first thing you do, you put it in standard form. So 10x squared minus 6x plus 3, I mean minus 3. 
and then you make sure you check whether you don't have anything to simplify by if if the terms share any common factor in this case they don't in this case they don't and then you have a equals 10 b equals negative 6 and c equals negative 3 then you use the formula x equals negative b so that's 6 negative negative 6 is positive 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared negative 6 squared is positive 36 minus 4 a 10 c negative 3 over 2 times a 10 so x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of we want one number under the radical now 36 you have negative 4 times 10 negative 40 negative 40 times negative 40 times negative 3 is positive 120 and then now you have 36 minus 120 is negative 84 negative 84 so negative 84 over negative 84 over 20 now do we have a, a fact or a number that is a perfect square that goes into 84 yes because 4 is and the square root of 4 you got uh, this will be 6 plus or minus the square root of it's negative 84 so we transform the negative into i negative under the radical of course negative square root of negative 1 equals i so i on the outside inside 84 is 4 times 21 square root of 4 is 2 so you get x equals 6 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 so that's 2i square root of 21 over 20. now we can see that all the terms in this expression they share they share 2 as a factor so if you simplify by 2 you're gonna have x equals 3 plus or minus i square root of 21 over 10 two solutions three plus i square root of 21 over 10 and the second is three minus i square root of 21 over 10 are the two solutions of this quadratic equation and then moving forward this they say use the quadratic formula i'm going to let you practice on that we're going to try to do some more complicated problem and this one you can use any method for it number 10 so i'm going to do let you do this one we're gonna practice more on number uh number 11 you can do it it says uh, solve you can use the quadratic you can use the square root property so you can use quadratic formula for this one with a equals 1 b equals negative 10 and c equals 50 same one, same as this one but you gotta put it in standard form first so 4x squared plus uh, minus 21x plus 5 equals 0 so a equals always remember to put it in standard form before you find a b c a equals 4 b equals negative 21 c equals uh c equals uh 5 or also you can use the factoring method because if you do 5 times uh 4 4 times 5 is 20 two factors of positive 20 that will add up to that will add up to 20 negative 21 are negative when you multiply 5 and 4 it's 20 and negative 20 times negative 1 you multiply them it's positive 20 and you add them it's uh, negative 21 and then you break the 21 down as 
negative 20 x and minus x see and then you do the group factoring also you can solve this go ahead and try this one but we're gonna go over number 12 number 12 13 and 14 so we can finish now when solving a problem that uh, uh, an equation any type of equation that includes the variable in denominator you always have to make sure you look for the restricted values of the problem that we also call the extraneous solutions restricted value restrictions on the on the on the equation on the variable for to solve the equation now for you to find the restrictions you don't want the denominator to be zero so when you look at this if x equals zero this part will have a denominator zero which you don't want so x equals zero becomes a restricted value so you can call it restrictions and then we're going to look at the denominator of each fraction in your expression and make sure you find all the restrictions necessary so that you make sure you is you you set the restrictions on the variable first restriction is that x cannot be zero if it's zero then this one will be zero will give you a negative zero in denominator which is not possible so we want x to be not equal zero x cannot be zero second over here what is the expression what's the value of x that will make x plus 2 equal 0 the value of x that makes x plus 2 equal 0 is negative 2 because if you have negative 2 plus 2 it's 0 so x cannot be negative 2 this one doesn't have x doesn't have x in denominator so it works you don't have to put any restriction for it that's step number one you need to find your restriction and the second step is to find the LCD the LCD is an expression that includes all the factors that you can ever see in the denominator section so first one would be 5 because I see 5 the next one is X and then X plus 2 and when you find it that way you make sure that your LCD you use it to multiply by your fractions so you can cancel all the denominators and have your flat equation. So now that's your LCD. If we multiply everything by the LCD, you're going to have 1 over x plus 1 over 1 over x times the LCD, of course, times the LCD 5x plus 2. 5x factor x plus 2 and then plus the second fraction 1 over x plus 2 times 5x factor x plus 2 and then equals that equals 1 over 5 times x times x factor x plus 2 now anything that is on top and on denominator will be cancelled out so we're gonna have x gone for this one uh, x plus 2 is gone for this one and then there's an there's a 5 right here that I forgot to put so there's a 5 here and then uh, 5 is gone for this fraction and then anything that remains you're going to write them down so that is 5 factor x plus 2 for the first equation that's left plus that is 5x that's left for the second equation fraction and then the last fraction on the other side of the equation it's x factor x plus 2 now we're going to cancel all parentheses and solve the problem so that's 5x plus 10 plus 5x equals x squared plus 2x 
we group everything on the same side of the equation. I always want to have everything in the side of x squared. Everything on the other sides, the other side is going to move and everything on the side of x squared stay where they are. So that's why I have x squared plus 2x, x plus 5x plus 5x is 10x, so that's negative 10x. And then 10 on this side moves to the other side is negative 10 equals zero. Then you simplify your expression. Make sure you simplify and understand the sign. Uh, x squared minus 8x minus 10 equals zero. Now you want to see whether you have anything that can multiply to give you 10 and then add to give you uh, negative 8. Multiply for 10 and then add for and multiply for negative 10 and add for negative 8. Not sure we can have that. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula is x equals negative b. So that's 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 84. A um, is uh, 64. Sixty four and minus four times a one c negative ten over two times a one, and then you do all the work sixty four minus plus forty sixty four plus forty. Is once 104. 104, we can simplify. By it includes a factor four, and we can simplify it by eight plus or minus uh, two square root of twenty three, twenty six, because. Let's do it instead so you can see every step of it. So it's square root of 4 times 26 over let me put this first and then we're going to have so that equals 8 plus or minus the square root of uh, 1 over 4 over 2. And then we're going to, to simplify the radical. We're going to simplify the radical as x equals x equals 8 plus or minus square root of 104 is the square root of 4 times 26 over 2. Square root of 4 is 2, so that's 8 plus or minus 2. 2 square root of 26. And then over 2. And then finally simplify by 2. Your solutions are um, 4 minus square root of 26. And 4 plus square root of 26. These are the two solutions of this quadratic equation. And then you're going to do number, number 13 and 14 the same way. Let's go ahead and find the, the restricted values. Restriction are... For this one is positive 5. For this one is negative 5. And then this one is both of them. So you're going to make sure you find the LCD. The LCD in this case, it's... The LCD 
is the product of x minus 5 and x plus 5 because this is the product of x minus 5 and x plus 5 simplified. Remember, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b factor a minus b. So that's why this one is the same as x minus 5, x plus 5, because 5, 25 is 5 squared. So we can multiply both sides by the LCD. When you multiply this fraction by the LCD, x minus 5, x plus 5, it cancels the x plus 5. So that's 4x times x plus 5. For the second fraction, x minus 5 it's can is cancelled. So you're left with x x plus 5 is cancelled for the second fraction. So you're left with 20x minus 5. And both of them are cancelled on the other side because this is the product of x plus 5 and x minus 5. So you're left with negative 136 on this side. And then you factor, you distribute the 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 expression on the outside so you can cancel the parentheses so that's 4x squared plus 20x plus 20x minus 100 equals negative 136 and then simplify 4x squared plus 40x uh, minus 100 minus 36 136 equals plus 136 equals zero then you simplify again, 4x squared plus 40x plus 36 equals 0. Then we can divide everything by 4, which is the GCF. Then you're going to have this, x squared plus 10x plus 9 equals 0. Two factors of 9 that add up to 10. So 9 and 1. Multiply 9 and 1, it's 9, and add them to 10. So two factors are x minus 9 plus 9. x plus 1 equals 0. So your two solutions of this is x equals negative 9. When you set up this equals 0 is x plus 9 equals 0. Subtract 9 on both sides gives you x equals negative 9 and the second equation x equals negative 1 and These are the solutions for this one And finally number 14 You find the LCD I mean first you need to factor this because it's not in factored form you should factor it first so that's 1 over what are two factors of 18 that add up to negative 9 Two factors of 18 that add up to negative 9 are um, 3 and three and 6, but for them negative. So x minus 3, x minus 6 equals 1 over x plus 6 plus, this one is factored as x minus 6 and x plus 6 so all the fact all the restriction are restrictions are uh, x cannot be positive 3 because positive 3 is a value that if you replace it by x here that makes it equal 0 you don't want that uh, negative 6 a uh, positive 6 negative 6 and that's it and the LCD is we need the factor x minus 3 we need the factor x plus 6 x minus 6 we already we need the factor x plus 6 we already have x minus 6 we already have x plus 6 so we have everything included in your in your LCD now if I multiply this one if I multiply this one by the LCD x minus 3 and x minus 6 are cancelled I'm only left with x plus 6 
and if it was one on top so that's x plus six over here if i multiply by the lcd i'm going to leave i'm going to stay with uh x minus three times x minus six and then if i multiply this one by the lcd i'm going to stay with only x minus three so that's plus five times x minus three and distribute wherever you see parentheses so that's this this is this we factored to get that so that's going to be x squared minus 9x plus 18 and this is plus 5x minus 15 simplify x plus 6 equals x squared uh, minus 4x uh, plus 3 and move everything to the side of x squared so we have x squared uh, minus 5x and minus 3 equals 0 so this you can solve it using any type of any type of uh, method that you have that you know including the quadratic equation where you can identify a equals 1 b equals uh, uh, negative 5 and c equals negative 1 plug in them into the formula and solve so next next stop it's going to be the the next um, instruction uh, instructional video that's going to be not about homework 2 actually because we just covered homework 2 but it's going to be about homework 3 which is going to be for next week we're probably going to cover this in class but video will be may be posted so we can also have the have it in record for those who may not be able to attend class see you in the next video